Good evening, this is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much once again for tuning to usmlevideos.net. Today I want to talk a few minutes about tumor markers. Tumor markers, thank God, they are very, very useful in detecting certain type of cancers, but in many others they are just have some value in prognosis and uh, treatment. Now let us talk a few minutes about some of the most common tumor markers we use in clinical practice. Let us start with alpha fetoprotein. Alpha fetoprotein is a marker for hepatocellular carcinoma. It is used to screen highly selected populations and to assess hepatic masses in patients at particular risk for developing hepatic malignancy. So whenever you think of uh, hepatic malignancy and hepatic masses, think of doing alpha fetoprotein. Then human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG, especially the beta subunit of HCG, it's an integral part of diagnosis and management of gestational trophoblastic disease. When we combine AFP and beta HCG, it is very helpful in the evaluation and treatment of non seminomatous germ cell tumors. And also, we can actually monitor the response to therapy. So AFP and beta HCG are useful in evaluating potential origins of poorly differentiated metastatic cancer. Now cancer antigen 27.29. It is most often used to follow response to therapy in patients with metastatic breast cancer. CA 27.29 it's highly associated with breast cancer but you see the important point is its level is also elevated in uh, several other malignancies like colon cancer, gastric cancer, hepatic cancer, lung cancer, pancreatic cancer, ovarian cancer and uh, prostate cancer. So CA2729 is not specific to any of these uh, cancers and it can be seen in many many different types of cancers and it is uh, also seen in benign disorders of breast, liver and kidney and ovarian cyst and but the important point is the level. In benign conditions its level is low whereas in uh, malignant conditions its level is high like uh, for example, if it is higher than 100 units per ml, it's, uh, it's a suspicious feature for malignancy. Now, carcinoembryonic antigen. Carcinoembryonic antigen is used to detect the lapse of colorectal cancer. Its elevations can also be seen in uh, other malignancies, non-malignant conditions. You see, we see it in um, colorectal cancer in malignancies but certain non-malignant conditions are also associated with CEA. Most of, uh, most importantly, peptic ulcer disease, inflammatory bowel disease, hypothyroidism, cigarette smoking, pancreatitis, cirrhosis and biliary obstruction. So again, you need to think of the level. If the level is low, it is benign and if its level is high it is malignancy. Now CEA is not useful in screening for colorectal cancer or in the diagnostic evaluation of an undiagnosed illness. That's an important point. So please do not get tempted to use CEA in your questions. To pick up CEA when you see colorectal cancer. It's not useful in screening. Why? Because there are so many other conditions where CA level is elevated as I have described earlier. A CA level should be utilized only after the malignancy has been diagnosed. 
So the value of CEA is only after the malignancy is detected by other means of diagnosis. Now let us turn a few minutes to CA99. CA99 may be helpful in diagnosing pancreatic abnormalities and there are certain benign conditions such as cirrhosis, cholestasis, cholangitis, pancreatitis they can result in uh, CA99 elevations, but in all those conditions, the level is less than 1000 units per mm. So, whenever you think of CA99, if the level is more than 1000 units per mm, that is associated with pancreatic cancer. But for examination purposes, all you need to remember is CA99 is for the detection of pancreatic cancer. Now CA125. CA125 is useful for evaluating pelvic masses in postmenopausal women to monitor response to therapy in women with ovarian cancer and you can also use it to detect recurrence of ovarian carcinoma. Postmenopausal women, for example, a 65-year-old woman came and she has an asymptomatic palpable pelvic mass and uh, you measure her CA125. It's like 70 units per ml. This woman has a high risk for ovarian cancer. She, she has, in fact, she is likely have ovarian cancer. So when you come across postmenopausal women with uh, asymptomatic palpable pelvic masses with the CN125 levels more than uh, 65 units per ml, you should suspect ovarian cancer. Now, finally, prostate-specific antigen. Prostate-specific antigen is used to screen for prostate cancer and it, de it, decades, it detects recurrence of the malignancy. So it's very useful in detecting the recurrence of malignancy and to screen for prostate cancer in certain patient populations. So that's about tumor markers and uh, thank you very much for your patient listening. Please post your comments and if you find any more important uh, uh, points about these tumor markers, please post them for the benefit of other students. And again, thank you very much. This is Dr. Paul, and uh, please visit us for more videos at www.usmlevideos.net. That is www.usmlevideos.net. Thank you very much, and have a good night.